We're speaking today to Joy Galloway, Executive Director of the Timmins Family Health Team. Uh, welcome today to the Change Foundation podcast, Joy. Thank you. The first question, just a general question. You lead 23 family doctors in uh, Northern Family Health Team. Can you outline how the doctors there are paid differently from physicians in other parts of the system? Our physicians, because they're members of the family health team, are, are paid based on that they have a number of their roster and in the Ministry of Health has a um, per capita basis set up for that. So they get a base rate depending on their um, population. And then on top of that, there are other incentives that were negotiated with the Ministry of Health and with the OMA. And these include incentives for preventative care, for um, taking on certain types of patients. Uh, a lot of patients um, may come on through the Healthcare Connects program. And again, that's an incentive for all physicians, actually, not just uh, family, family health care as well. So some of those incentives certainly help. There are uh, incentives as well for uh, perhaps uh, diabetic care, um, certain levels of care that are, are required, um, smoking cessation. Some of these are offered to fee-for-service physicians as well, but um, those are certainly offered to family health team physicians. So these are based on government priorities on preventive care. That's right. So secondly, um, in terms of funding, what are some of the aspects of the family health care team model that work against realizing the full potential of uh, family health teams? And we, we reali realize that they're new still. Uh, for example, some doctors are paid bonuses, but other members of the team, like nurses, may not. Uh, it has been suggested that the, the bonus or the incentive payment go to the family health team itself. What do you think of that idea and s some general comments in that area? Well, and, and certainly that issue, you know, has come up and um, how basically I personally address it is, is, is indicating that the negotiations were done with the OMA and uh, the Ministry of Health with, with family physicians. Some family health teams, I believe, do pay to the um, family health team. And I think that, again, will be a, a change over time. Family health teams have only been in existence for the past four going on four and five years. So those changes will come over time as the family health team um, becomes more evolved. And lastly, what are some of the big funding area lessons from family health teams that might work applied across the system? What can we learn? I know it's to, uh, to improve primary care. How do we work some of these things across the system? Are we talking about cultural change ultimately? Certainly for family health teams, it's a cultural change and, uh, and not just for physicians. I made the mistake one time of saying to our lead physician who is, is very um, active and proponent of uh, family health care, I was saying that docs need to change. Well, they're not the only ones. We all have to look at being equal members of the team, how we, um, how we interact together, how processes need to change. And basically, the change across the family health team is, is, the, is the big issue. In terms of uh, roles, the family t health team coordinates many professionals. Uh, but in order to make that role, um, what you're saying is to make that team work even better, you have to have integration across parts of the system as well right, in order to make that care continuous, a crossing continuum? And I think that's an element that family health teams are just starting to um, get into. Um, and, and each family health team is going to be a little bit different depending on their integration and um, even their, their local environment at the same time. Certainly, um, we try and get involved. We have a community advisory committee that we get the rest of the population uh, or other agencies involved to give us impact, in, input into how we're doing. And you definitely need to have uh, connections with the CCAC and with the hospitals. I think that we'll be looking more and more at um, how we manage diseases, how we manage uh, certain populations, and uh, again, but we're very much in the developmental stages. So in, in terms of um, the big context of aging population, rise in chronic disease management, um, is self-management also something that you know we need to focus on in terms of 
I think it, um, the message, you know, across uh, all of healthcare in Canada right now is the self-management, and we certainly are uh, proponents that we use the standard, uh, the Stanford self-management program. We have master trainers sponsored by the Lynn actually, who are going to help with other uh, parts of the sector to do that. Patients need to take responsibility. We've done some focus groups with um, clients and they actually appreciate being responsible and taking care of their own health. That is a big change. Uh, you know, as much as we talk about the changes that need to be in healthcare, there needs to be uh, changes in our, our uh, clients, patients as well. Thank you for being in the Change Foundation podcast today. Thank you.